Hello and welcome back to Freeman and our Iron Man challenge. Now, when we left off, we were attempting to defend against the ferocious onslaught uh, by the Chinov Confront, and I made some rather grievous errors, but that's neither here nor there right now because we're, we're doing fine. You know, we're making faction funds right here. You can see that it's now up to 12,000. It actually did skyrocket all the way up to 98,000, but of course, because my generals are trying to get units into their armies and so on and so forth they obviously use the funds to do that as well as to garrison Zinkov a little bit further as you can see right there there's 30 in the garrison there now instead of like what 12 there was I think otherwise we now have 31,000 I have been attempting to loot camps so I have been attempting to destroy looter camps I did do a battle against some CFR but they were outmatched very easily and as you can see right here we plundered this village once again. And we are now 40% along the way to completing Finn's task. And then he will join us, hopefully. So we're going to go and try and take Arbor today. There's 70 of them here. But I think we have a pretty good shot. This is my army at the moment, as you can see. And I'm just going to reward my people a little bit. And then we will move on there we go okay fantastic uh i think i did level up yeah i think i did level up from the end of the previous episode and i didn't spend my points you can already see what i expected into i expected into constitution and basically just leveled up my shotgun proficiency all the way to 97 which is just insane now bear in mind that my shotgun itself is so incredible it really is it is really really fun to use so hopefully I'll be able to get a couple more opportunities to do that because the shotgun, when you use it, it feels powerful, you know? It feels powerful. It feels like it's something that definitely does damage in comparison to some of the other weapons. And I'm talking about maybe maybe even the SVD here because the SVD, it is a very usable sniper rifle. It is capable of doing damage. We've seen it. You know, it's capable of some very nice kills. It's got good good range on it but it's not that good at actually killing things quickly in a short amount of time you know it's it's going to take a long time to do that that's where the shotgun really excels but obviously the shotgun does have a maximum range you know it's going to be very difficult to use from mid-range or anything anything above mid-range is going to be almost impossible so yeah it's a really, really nice weapon to use at close range. So otherwise, let's send our people over in this direction and we'll split them up a little bit. I don't think this is a good idea, but we're going to try it because it is nighttime and maybe we'll get a good little ambush going on the opponent. I am a bit worried about doing this usually because to me, the best strategy that you can have in Freeman is to keep all of your units together not in a massive clump of course because you don't really want to get one grenade taking out all your guys you know that's just going to be a bit silly but the point is is that what you want is to have them in a situation where they will curve around let me actually just show you on the map here so for example this you see the circle right here if you have all your units come into this area and then you just spread them out all along the curvature of this circle. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about because it provides the maximum area of effect that you can possibly have from your weapons. And that's the kind of thing you want. You don't really want to have a situation where your units are split up so much. Now, I know that a lot of people say, hey, you should probably split up your units. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think splitting up your units is a very very cool strategy to have very nice tactic indeed but it is very mm, i think you got you got to be quite choosy when you actually do that because if you do it too much you're gonna let your units become outnumbered by the opponent and then the opponent is going to overwhelm them and you're going to lose four squads or three squads or however many squads you sent off there like for example i, I sent off three squads here and you can see that th these guys right here in the bottom right, they're not doing anything, you know? They're, they're not actually doing anything because there are no enemies there, you know? There's just, just nothing to do, nothing to do. So 
that is indeed a bit of a problem in splitting up your units because even though my, my forces were actually able to defeat them, let's just think about if we were actually going up against someone like the Atoll Federation or the Hosna, for example. These factions are going to murder very fast. And you can see here, look at this. We're actually having some, maybe some slight issues. Maybe some slight issues. I might need to actually tell my forces just to hold position in that area while our other forces catch up. Because as it stands right now, we're not having a very good time of things. That was a headshot and he stayed alive. Wow. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about as well, by the way, with the SVD. I have 12 marksmanship and I am still not really capable of killing these units at the very least in one hit and in my opinion I should be I should really be able to kill them in one hit but it is of course as many people have told me in the past a relatively low caliber weapon it's not got massive bullets you know it's not a 50 cal thing you know it's not an anti-vehicle weapon of course so it is not going to be doing that much damage but in my opinion a headshot from an svd rifle no matter how small or large the the caliber is going to be it's a headshot you know it's a headshot like i personally feel like that should result in a kill almost every time but it is we got to remember that the game is also an rpg it is also an rpg and and many rpgs that feature shooting mechanics or the other way around shooters that feature rpg mechanics do have that kind of system where one headshot is not going to result in a kill and that's absolutely understandable no problem at all there I'm not complaining about that at all I just feel like I should really be killing these guys in one hit with a headshot I feel like that really makes more sense than how it is at the moment Ooh, these guys went way too far in okay we're gonna have to get them out of there and these guys are gonna have to go in because we, we really want to support them and we don't want to lose too many units. Bear in mind that the enemy is actually dwindling so significantly right now. Just look at how many units they have left. And we've only lost two of ours. And I'm actually just going to... Oh, hello. Yeah, that's the shotgun. You can see that on the right side of the screen. It just absolutely spams the screen with with damage numbers because it is just so incredible and it, you know look at this i shot this guy from all the way over there i don't know whether you can call that mid-range i'd probably still call that close range to be honest because in the grand scheme of things it's not really uh it's not really like across a whole field you know it is just over there but a shotgun being able to hit from that range i like it you know i feel like the shotguns have been significantly improved from when I last tried them and I'm talking about this is a few versions back so the developers have obviously been like okay so we've got to do something about these shotguns you know got to make them a little bit better and personally I love that I really like close range combat and uh, that's exactly the reason why in previous versions I was lobbying for well should we say viable melee builds because I personally feel like melee is actually kind of fun too, but uh, I think the developers actually removed the melee weapons because it might have been a little bit clunky. And th that's understandable, you know. I, I don't have a problem with that. I feel like melee would be really, really fun, but it is one of those things where you uh, just want to have your gameplay be a certain type of way. And I completely understand why they removed it. It was just very difficult to balance because on the one hand you have melee combat you know so you have melee people going in and fighting with you know i mean mostly it was the player because basically no no ai ever really used melee but the point is is that if the player wanted to use melee then they would have to run up against well you've seen some of the hailstorms of bullets that we've gone up against and having to go up against that while you're wielding a machete or a combat axe or something like that, it's probably going to result in your death. You know, that kind of thing is definitely a uh, <laughs> bit of a bone of contention. So, of course, uh, I did suggest some additional skills be added for 
Whoa, that's a lot of units. Yeah, that's a lot of units right there. As you can see, we're spamming the screen again, but it's not really doing that much damage unless you get a critical hit or something like that. But yeah, uh, basically I, I suggested that we have a, a new skill be added that is like a dodge kind of ability, but that also then adds a whole bunch of other RNG. And a lot of people don't really like RNG in their RPGs. I mean, uh, technically there's a lot of, well, there is a lot of RNG in RPGs, but the point is, is that in this kind of game, I guess people didn't really think that was a good idea. So no dodge for us, but that's okay because there's no melee either. So we're absolutely fine with that. But there you go. My uh, casual conversation about RPG mechanics and uh, well, the various other facets of it have gotten us through this siege and we gained 111,000 credits and almost 11,000 experience gain as well. That is pretty amazing. I like it. All right, so I'm going to just take everything that I can. Uh, I will be swapping out uh, a couple of pieces here and there. Swap out these two pieces of ammo because I would like to get the iron, if at all possible. My store is full. Are you serious? There we go. Weird. I'm not entirely sure why, why that was uh, why that was a thing. Oh well. Yeah, I did uh, go to a lumber mill, by the way, and I did gain some wood. So I don't actually need wood, but I guess I will take it nevertheless. Just to make sure. Let's not skip the prisoners this time around. <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our companions here and I am going to... I'm going to make Igor into a general slash mayor and we are going to increase his financial and we'll increase his tactics to four as well. And Igor is going to become our new mayor. You will be the mayor of Arbor. There we go. All right. Fantastic. Okay, so we just have Leonid now, which is absolutely fine. I think he's going to be good for a while longer. And let's just level up our troops here. Do you see how expensive these guys are? It's insane. 30,000. I wonder what level these guys are now. Level 12 still. Can you imagine what, they, what the cost is going to be like when they actually hit level 15? Wow. It's going to be pretty crazy. Well, whatever the case, let's just start auto-equipping. Oh, yeah. We're slowly, slowly building our forces up. You can see that, you know, they're, they're slowly go, turning from a very small fighting force armed with pitchforks, basically. And then they are now running around with fully automatic weapons and body armor and all that wonderful stuff, which is definitely going to help them to be greater soldiers for us, which is really nice. Otherwise, let's, uh, let's sell a couple of things here. And yeah, I think that's absolutely fine. We'll sell that. Sell this. Just going to make sure they sell everything that I can. And there we have it. 14,000. That's actually really nice. And there are storage items maybe being built here. Maybe being made, shall we say. And uh, yeah, okay. We're absolutely fine otherwise. So let's just speed things up a little bit and see what happens. Okay, so Igor used the rest of the uh, the funds to get himself some units, and he's chasing. Okay, I'm 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 not convinced that he's going to be able to uh, win in that battle. Should I go and help him? We should probably go and help him. Ninety four percent chance. Yeah, if if we have a ninety four percent chance along with Igor against these guys, how much did he have? He probably didn't have anywhere near that. So he was a bit of an imbecile going in there. But, well, he's, he's doing his best, I guess. He's doing quite, quite a good job to try and defend the lands around here. And look at our financial skill paying off right here. Look at that. 141,000 in faction funds, which is just crazy good. So that is really nice. I will actually give a couple of people the ability to get a shotgun if they want. It seems like the AI does not really prefer having shotguns. I know the Spetsnaz units that are quite rare now, they used to be quite quite common to find, but the Spetsnaz units are, I think, shotgun specialists. So that would definitely be something to think about when and if we are able to gain them in our army. Otherwise, let's sell a couple of things. Let's be careful. Yes, let's let's uh, 
Let's be very, very cautious about what we actually sell here. We don't want to sell Finn by mistake, do we? That would be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? Yes, not so much. All right, so what's in the barracks here? Mm, I've got 93,000. Do I really want to spend any money on anyone? Technically, I could. I mean, we have 44. I think that's quite... I think that's enough for the moment. Let's see what uh, Igor decides to do with our faction funds, because he actually does have a huge... Oh, no, never mind. Faction funds have just disappeared in an instant. Let's level up our constitution and get another point in inventory. And I don't think we need marching speed at the moment. We seem to be plenty, plenty fast. And uh, getting that additional inventory is going to be quite useful for us. So otherwise, let's get some buildings built, shall we? Uh, okay, so there's actually an armor factory. It produces steel... Uh, actually, no. It produces a CQ rifle, apparently. No, no, wait. Steel helmet. Mm, my bad. I'm reading the wrong the wrong line. But anyway, yes, it produces a steel helmet. Not a big fan of that. I'm actually going to try and get another, another little bit of tools and then build a uh, Spetsnaz factory or something like that. That will probably be quite nice. But uh, yeah, the CFR are actually proving to be much more difficult than they used to be in previous versions, which is actually kind of amazing. So yeah, we can actually build that there as well. But as you can see, I have placed a bunch of tools here. So that's really, really nice because that means I will be able to go out again. And we can now build a Spetsnaz boot camp, which will then mean that Spetsnaz units will be trained in this area and they will then be available in the barracks to recruit they're not free <laughs> you do have to pay for, pay for that so yeah anyway uh i would like to get a large barracks i think that is probably going to be more important than the spetsnaz at the moment so yeah because that's going to increase garrison cap and i personally feel like that is much more important than getting spetsnaz at the moment we will be able to get spetsnaz it's just going to take us a bit of time so I'm just going to go here and place these tools back in. And uh, yeah, it seems like Zinkov produces a huge amount of fish. And Arba also produces a huge amount of fish. Oh dear. Yeah, so what I've basically been doing is sending gifts to the VFA. And that has improved their relation with us by 10 so far. And there you go, there's another 10. And hopefully we'll be able to continue doing that. You can see that you can only do that once per day. So you will need to be a bit selective about what you do there. But otherwise, Zalaniv is the last city that the CFR have. I'm wondering whether we're going to be able to do it. Because if we take a look at my units here, they're pretty good. You know, they're pretty good. They're not, they're not awful by any, mean, by any means, by any stretch, whatever you want to say. And I think we could probably do a pretty good job here because uh, they don't have any generals anymore because of Olga and the whole situation and incident that we had in the previous episode let's not speak of it but otherwise yeah they they have no more no more generals or anything like that so it's actually pretty good potentially for us to do something about this and maybe just take it straight up as you can see there's actually a custom weapon here which is really nice too that's an SKKS with something customized not entirely sure what has been customized though Ooh, there's a Spetsnaz helmet. That is pretty fantastic. Shall we just try and gamble a little bit? I'd like to get the Spetsnaz helmet, if at all possible, because the only way, as far as I'm aware, that you can get the helmet there is actually recruiting a Spetsnaz unit and then taking the helmet from them. As far as I'm aware, that's basically the only way that you're able to get it, apart from, obviously, gambling here. We could also try and maybe get a scar because I'm thinking that maybe using an assault rifle with a relatively uh, relatively good scope is going to be more effective than using the SVD rifle, which might actually be the case. So if I can maybe get a scar or something like that, or maybe I'll just buy a better assault rifle because the scar is, well, you know, very good, you know, it is very good. Maybe it's not as good as maybe a Groza or an Org or something like that. Seems like I'm missing out on these things by a very small margin here. So, yeah, I might just have to return here at some point and just gamble a little bit in my off-screen time. Uh, yeah, we missed out. <laughs> Only by one little 
little place there as well, which was uh, very frustrating. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. We're, look at that. It's getting closer, you know. It's getting closer to the Spetsnaz and it's getting closer to the Scar, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. As you can see, there's actually just five opportunities left, so I guess I'm just going to leave it for the moment. Anything in the barracks here that I really want to take? Maybe these militia riflemen could help me out a little bit. And I'll take the female militia as well. We have 50,000 remaining. So we'll just do that. Let's just do auto group up, auto group up, auto group up. And I think everyone is maxed out. Yes, everyone is actually maxed out now. Oh yeah, by the way, every single time I level up now, I will be leveling up my leadership because I need more command skill. Because we are currently running a little bit low in the amount of people that I can actually field to uh, field in battle. Oh, hello, Constantine. Ah, yes, this guy is actually wanting to besiege Zalaniv, and I will not allow him to do that, so I am going to besiege it first. <laughs> he's not going to be pleased with me. I'm sure he's going to declare war or something like that because I've taken this city from underneath his feet. Ah, now look at this. This is an absolutely wonderful layout. I don't know whether you can see exactly why that is, but I, I will tell you, nevertheless, basically, you can take all these flags super easily and really, really quickly. However, the main problem with it, that's a, that's a positive, but the main problem with it is exactly the same thing. The fighting area and the spawn area for the enemy is significantly smaller than usual, and as a result, you're probably going to have to fight quite a few units in very close proximity to each other, which is going to make things much more difficult. So we're going to see how that goes. I'm just going to, as I use the fan technique like I usually like, the strategy there. We'll see if that works. I do have the SVD once again. As I say, I'm not a big fan of the SVD rifle. I think it's great when you're able to get headshots. But headshots are not exactly something that you can get most of the time. I mean, yeah, you know, I've been getting quite a few in previous episodes and indeed in this episode as well. But it is one of those things where you have to be concentrating quite a bit. And it's, it's kind of difficult to do that when you're under fire, for example. So you really don't want to have that kind of concentration when you have to worry about your own survivability. And that's exactly the reason why an assault rifle... Or uh, maybe a VA Val, actually. A VA Val is actually a really nice rifle to use because it's uh, inherently suppressed, so you don't even need to buy a suppressor. And it also has... Uh, basically, it, it is a rifle. So if you have rifle proficiency like I do, then you don't even need to spec into assault rifles. And you can literally just use that, and it's basically the same thing as an assault rifle. However, it does have a very large amount of bullet drop so if you're firing from range it's going to be kind of difficult to use so there's that anyway we're going to try and take this flag right here am i being shot at no i think my my guys are shooting right now all right yeah there they are so we're just going to send these guys down here and we will try to get them to take out all these enemies as you can see it's pretty easy to uh, advance on the CFR they really don't have a huge amount of slopping power that cat is that cat is just like hey there I am taking I am I am rising up I am rising up into the sky not in that way but uh, yes that cat is going to absolutely destroy everything around here just with its eyes I mean you can see that laser cat yes that's what we like to see. But anyway, uh, yeah, as you can see here, look at this. These enemies are just all in this area, and they are not really knowing what to do. And the thing is, is that we can basically just advance on them this whole time. Just just go straight up, you know? We can just go literally straight up into them. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little bit of a sneaky, sneaky something, something here. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do it. Hello. There are a couple of people over here as well. Headshot. Ooh. So the Rebel Grenadiers actually do die in one hit to a headshot, but the other ones don't. So I guess they just have slightly better helmets or something like that. This is actually a really cool layout, though. I really like this layout.
I'm actually wondering where the enemy is. Can't really... Ah, there we go. Yeah, they're wearing some really nice camouflage. I, I gotta say, it does make it a little bit difficult to see them. But I'm actually, because I am quite armored, going to run over here. And I'm gonna see if I can do a little bit of... Oh, hello. I'm gonna do a little bit of sneaky sneaky. And uh, I've got my shotgun. Hello. Okay, so I was unaware that they would be able to shoot me through the uh, little little grating there, so that was not very good. But uh, yeah, I still have um, I still have helmet armor, which I suppose is fine, but I do not have any other kind of armor, which is not so fine. So we are just going to need to stay here. But yeah, that's kind of a bit of an issue sometimes with Freeman. Some of the environment is well clippable a little bit so enemies can shoot through it even though you see you think that you're taking cover but enemies can actually shoot through that and that is a bit of a problem but for the most part like for example this you see this right here look at that you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to shoot through this building come on now that's a little bit unfair <laughs> uh, but thankfully I have so much armor that it is quite difficult for people to kill me and so much HP but you know the point is that uh, you kind of have to take these risks if you want to get stuff done. But unfortunately, because that particular building did allow things to shoot through, we were taking much more significant damage than I would have otherwise taken. So there's also that. Hello. Are you... Wait a minute. Is this one of... That's one of mine. I'm so sorry. I thought this guy spawned in right next to me. And I was like, oh, we should probably take him out, you know? But yeah, this is where they were actually shooting me from. As you can see, there's no one in there. I was I was hiding right here, and they they shot right through. So I assume that uh, this is. Well, maybe there were people inside. Somehow I don't think so. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe there were people inside, and I'm just seeing things. But it seemed to me like that that was a completely solid wall. So oh well. Whatever the case, maybe my complaints are unfounded. But otherwise, that is indeed a victory for us. Once this flag is completely raised, that will be it. I think. Did we... Oh, they took back... Are you serious right now? Wow. That's actually kind of impressive. The AI actually took... One of the flags. Oh, never, never mind. Never mind. They decided to retreat instead. There's 118,000, 11,000 experience gain. That's really fantastic. Now, bear in mind that even though I complained about the fact that enemies were shooting me through the wall, uh, I still think that Freeman is actually really fun. And these small little things every now and again that are a little bit, shall we say, unpolished. Uh, I don't really mind that, you know, because the game as a whole is actually really fun as it is. So even though those things are a bit annoying sometimes, they don't happen that often. You know, they really don't happen that often, so it's not a big deal. Otherwise, we're just going to increase our leadership, increase our marching speed once again. Let's get a little bit more in shotguns. And then I suppose I'll actually start increasing my assault rifles because I might want to use one if I can't find a VA Val or something like that. And as you can see, now that fellow is not going to siege us any further, or at least he shouldn't. I hope he's not going to. It would be nice if he just left us alone. Thank you very much. And we'll just sell the pistols here. Sell this. Sell this. I don't think anyone needs helmets, to be honest, but uh, maybe they will. I don't really... I don't think so, to be honest. So we'll, we'll just see. But yeah, all of my guys are leveling up like no one's business. 
Look at that. Absolutely insane amounts of money being spent. 40,000. Did you see that? Did I just spend 40,000 on the Cheetah Assault Squad? I think I did. Wow. Okay, that's some insanity right there. All right. Well, everyone seems to be good. Let's just uh, get this auto group up. There we go. And there we are. All right. Nice. Whoa, someone from the Cheetah Assault Squad actually did want an upgrade of some kind. I don't even know what it was. But uh, yeah, it seems like it's vests and things. So that's pretty cool. All right. So now that means I can basically sell everything else that I have here. Make a little bit of extra cash as a result of it. And there we have it. All right. So there you go. We have completely eliminated the CFR. And the Cat Federation reigns supreme against our first opponent. Our next opponent will probably be the Uman terrorists, but they are going to be much more difficult because Berezno has 145 in the garrison there. I look forward to it. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.